Welcome to the Lori and Cher Show, Hacking Into Awesome. I'm Lori Williamson. And I'm Cher Jones. And if you don't know, Cher and I are cousins, and we host this weekly Google Plus Hangout where we talk to absolutely amazing people and totally hack in to their awesome. That's right. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, whether live or watching the replay, make sure you hit subscribe because because what we want to make sure that you do is, hold on one second, sorry about that. What we want to make sure you do is connect with us live and um, subscribe to our channel as well. If you like this video, make sure you like it. And if you don't like it, let us know what's up, why you don't like it. And of course, we are also on Facebook. So show us some like love by going over to facebook.com slash Lori and share. And as well, hit the like button. We always are sharing amazing, amazing information about our guests, whether past or current, as well as some cool stuff we find on the web all the time. Right, Lori? Absolutely. Um, let's get the show started. Today we have our hot topics, plus we are going to be talking a little bit about um, approachability in the dating world and, you know, in all other opportunities in life. But before that, um, we want to talk about a party we're throwing, right, Cher? A no party like a scandal party. That's right. April 17th. We want you to come out and watch season three, the season finale with us. We are just, just nailed down our location. So those details are coming up soon. So make sure you head over to our Facebook page because that's where we post everything first. And um, hang, up with the, hang out with us on April 17th live and in person if you love scandal. Guys, if you're smart, you will love scandal or at least come to the party, right? <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think that we're going to have a good time. And I think if you had watched last week's episode of Scandal, you know that the show is back on top. After last week, I know that the season finale is going to be awesome. Absolutely. I am so excited. Um, and we talked about this, Lori. We talked about the fact that we just felt not necessarily betrayed, but we weren't feeling the direction of the show. But... Shonda righted a lot of wrongs with that episode, so we're going to be talking season, the season finale. We're going to be talking about the whole season at our party, so make sure you join us. Exactly. Well, I'd like to introduce our guest for tonight. She's going to be joining us for our Hot Topics, and then we're going to be talking about her company, Approach to Link. Fianna Andrews, welcome to the Lori and Cher Show. Thank you for having me. Yay. So we're going to talk a little bit about what you do a little bit later on in the show, but we wanted to get you to weigh in on our hot topics, our awesome, not so awesome um, lineup of topics tonight. Cher, why don't you kick things off? Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Because you know me. I love Game of Thrones. We talked about that with Paul C. Brunson, who is a closeted fan. But don't worry. I got <laughs> you. Because we. Um, I found this article. It was really interesting. This teacher, really smart teacher, basically what he's doing is saying, you know what? If you guys can't behave in class, I'm going to write down the names of everybody who dies in Season 3. Season 3 is coming up shortly. And I just think that that's brilliant. Uh, control your class class with whatever way you can. What do you guys think? Fiona, Fia, uh, Fiona t I'll go with you first. Let me know what you think. I think it's a great idea. My full time actually is a school psychologist. So I actually recommend the best ways to have a good classroom and classroom management. So maybe I could add that to one of my psych reports. <laughs> <laughs> And what about you, Lori? Um, I mean, I don't know. Is this like an ultimatum? Is this blackmail? Um, right. It absolutely is. You, know, you guys I, can't behave. <laughs> is it a good thing to teach kids at this age to blackmail to get your way? Because uh, they're high school kids. Huh? They're high school kids. You're not going to have elementary kids watching this show. Trust me on that. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I'm thinking that there's a lot of people that don't like ultimatums and they don't like to be blackmailed into doing something that they don't want to do. So, clever technique, but, um, I mean, I sure wouldn't want someone to spoil a show for me. So, I can understand why this would put some kids under manners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most definitely. So, we have our next story, and uh, this one's quite unique. Um, it's in New York City, and there's basically a yoga studio that's saying, let's do yoga naked. Hey, Lori, let's go. Can I borrow your mat? Like, that's so disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I'm wondering, 
<laughs> I'm wondering, is this hot yoga? Because I've done hot yoga before, oh, and you're boy. sweating, you're sweating, you're dripping, and I mean, it's kind of nasty to be even like in hot yoga dripping on yourself. So imagine all the crevices. Like I mean, I'm seeing bum holes in this in this situation, and there's a lot of other cracks and creases that stuff will be sweating on. So I mean, like I would not be. No one's borrowing my mat, and I think also <laughs> this 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 this. this um, this thing that they're doing is for body image, which I find interesting because everyone in this picture that we're showing looks like they have a pretty solid body. Yeah. So it would be interesting if they had some people that, you know, might have... I know I understand that everyone has, you know, looks at themselves and, and realizes there's imperfections, but I think there might have been a better statement if there were some people of of um, varying body shapes in this um, in this news story. Yeah, I agree with that. Another thing too, like even when you're naked, your certain body parts are showing. So I'm pretty sure they're not all the same sizes in there. <laughs> so talking about body image and everyone being the same, they said something about everyone being the same. Even naked, you're not the same. I know. I I just don't think that I could focus on my own body and the own exercises I'm supposed to be doing with all these people around me are naked. I couldn't do it. I mean, it takes a special type of person to, to do yoga naked. So um, definitely the nay for me, no thank you, no hot, no hot, no cold, no yoga, no <laughs> naked yoga period that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Up next, we have another naked story. Everybody seems to be getting naked on the internet. I don't know if you guys have seen this one yet. So basically, hashtag is all on Instagram, and it's guys are taking pictures with their with their junk in a sock, and basically is with the hashtag cock in a sock. So forget you know dick in the box like JT was talking about earlier to raise awareness for testicular cancer. I don't know how much awareness this raises, but it certainly got my attention. What about you? Um, I'm going to say yes, it got my attention because, um, like, if you are in, um, if you're shooting a, a sex scene in the movies, they use socks. You know, like, your business goes in a sock if you're a man. And um, it's quite intimate. And for them to, you know, so many guys to uh, expose their, their, you know, their, their parts down there, I thought was um, definitely something that you are going to want to tune into. I mean, the guys that I saw, and there was a lot of them, um, they had great bodies. So um, yeah. good on them for doing something different. And, I mean, but I saw a lot of hair as well, like down there. I, I wish maybe that had been cleaned up a little bit. So. <laughs> just saying, hashtag just saying. <laughs> No, I mean for me, I mean we'll send we'll we'll send we'll post the link on our Facebook page um, as well as down below in this video to the BuzzFeed curation of these great pictures because the ones that BuzzFeed curated they were amazing. This is a PG plus type kind of show, so we're not going to show the full thing, but literally you saw pretty much everything except for the sock. What was what the sock was covering? So take a look. I'd love to explore that hashtag to see what else we find besides what BuzzFeed found for us. So, um, Fiona, what if you saw this coming up in your in your feed? What would you what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see it come up in my feed today, actually on Facebook, and it did catch my attention. That's for sure. <laughs> So Did you click on it? Um, I was about to, but then I was like, I need to check my emails first because I, I was expecting emails from you guys. <laughs> and funny enough, you guys were talking about it. I love it. <laughs> we are on top of things, I tell you. So and I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that they're doing this and they're poking fun at, you know, a serious situation. But, I mean, if it's going to raise awareness, then I think they're doing it in a good way. So thumbs up on them. So, Fiona, you have great hair, and, I mean, as black women, we've all have struggled with the fact that people want to touch our hair, and so I saw this on Upworthy today, and it's a whole video, it's about a 15-minute short film on how women feel when, black women in specific feel when someone comes up to them and saying, hey, can I touch your hair? And it was different feelings, but when you saw that this video, which again, we'll link to um, this video as well as on our Facebook page. When you saw this video, what did you, did that elicit um, an emotional reaction or a thought from you when you saw it? 
I have experienced that myself, where someone touched my hair without asking. Um, I, well, I was on a plane, and reaching from behind me was a hand that tugged on one of my braids. <laughs> so I was quite surprised, because who would reach in between two chairs on a plane to do that? Um, so yeah, that was my probably the worst experience. Oh, well, I wouldn't say worst because it wasn't like I was hurt by it, but it was interesting to have that happen to me. Lori, what about you? Um, that something that's plagued me, whether I'm wearing my natural hair, whether I'm wearing my straight hair, um, extensions, people always want to figure out what I'm doing with my hair, and it's like, um, no. I don't, I don't think that I have any desire to touch anyone else's hair. So mm -hmm. I don't know why people always want to put their hands in my hair. And this is guys and girls, and this is people of all different races. Yes, I was going to say guys, that. Like, hello, didn't your mom tell you don't put your hand in a woman's hair, a black woman's hair especially? So, um, yeah, I definitely have gone through it, and if someone asks me, I'm pretty open. And I'll say, like, yeah, you can touch it. Or other times I'm just like, honestly, just, just, just give it a rest. And it really, you don't have to be that curious. It's not really that important. And you're probably going to forget about it um, soon time anyway. So, um, yeah. How about you, Cher? Oh, yeah. I mean, I even identified, there's one woman in the video who was saying, you know, she's standing in line and there's these two women behind her saying, do you think she'll mind if we touch her hair? Do you think she'll mind? Do you think it'll be okay? What if I just, and the woman's literally, they're right behind her. So it was just, I've had that experience before. And um, it is something, it's like, I, I think I liken it to women who are pregnant and people are like, oh, your belly, can I? And it's like, no, that's not okay. <laughs> this is your personal space, you know, like, recognize it and appreciate it and respect it and um, another woman said you know it's like being on display or being like a, a pet this is not appropriate behavior and it's something that what and, it, and again it's not we're not attacking one particular um, race it's I it comes from all people it comes from everybody wanting to just touch and it's not okay so yeah and we have one more story for you guys tonight I don't know about you but let me take a South Bay. And um, that song, while it is raging hot right now, there's also um, a lot of research around selfie addiction. And dare I say, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm addicted because I don't post what I take, all the pictures I take, but I sure do take a lot of pictures. But this kid that you're seeing, well, he's not a kid, he's 18 years old, a 19-year-old, and he, take, he has been taking over 200 selfies a day. Which is insane. I mean, he also has some other mental health health issues, including um, obsessive compulsive disorder. But um, this is something that they have seen outside of just this one kid. So this is part of social media creating disorders for people. Um, are you guys at all addicted to taking selfies? No. I <laughs> I have to admit that I do like taking selfies. I don't like you. I don't post all of them, but I do like taking pictures. Yeah, but how many are you taking? You know what I mean? Like, are you taking, like, I sometimes, after the show, I swear, I take, and Lori will attest to this, like, I could take, like, 30 pictures just trying to get the right, and it's <laughs> so bad but that's how it looks so yeah um, definitely taking the selfies and um, Lori what about you you take selfies no not really no, I'm not. Really... huh no you're just not that selfie kind I am of not that person that likes to I don't even like to be on camera like doing the show was like you had to push me to want to do this I've always been the person that's behind the camera um, I don't want, I never had aspirations of being like, oh, let me be in front of the camera. Um, I'm very particular. I don't like to take, we were at an event on Friday, Cher, uh, you and I, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, it wasn't a selfie, but it was come, let's take pictures, and I was like, oh, no, no, it's okay. I, I'll curate, I'll, I'll tell people where to go. So, no, I don't have the selfie addiction. I've only now taken a little bit more photos because I think it is important to kind of document yourself. Um, but it's only because of the show. It's not because I'm like at home being like, let me take a photo of myself. Um, I it, for the longest time it took me forever to change my Facebook profile picture. Um, it's just something that now that we take photos after the show, that I was like, okay, I can, I might as well change it up every now and then. But 
I'm totally not one of those people that are into, even in my Instagram, I think there's like one photo of me. Yeah, that's about fair. I'm like the exact opposite, but yeah. um, I'm forcing my ways onto Lori. So you, you are. <laughs> Well, Laura, I think we should head into our main topic for the for the night, and um, we're excited to have you, Fianna, and um, Lori, go ahead with the introduction. Absolutely. So, Fianna, you're a psych ed consultant. She is a shy person advocate who tweets the science of what creates approachable opportunities. We were, of course, taking... A look at your Twitter 160 bio, 140 bio, 160 character bio. Um, anyhow, and you are the creator of Approach to Link, and you do conversation parties. So, welcome to the show again, um, Fianna. Um, let's talk about it. Um, you have this company, this group, this organization that you came up with called Approach to Link. Why did you feel the need to create this? Well, I wanted to provide opportunities for people to meet. I know there is different business type of networking events, but not much social type events unless you want to go to a club, which a lot of people nowadays are preferring not to go to clubs to meet people. So I wanted to create an environment that would really encourage interaction uh, between all the people that are there and just have it social and just networking. So how long have you been doing this for? So how long have you guys been, have you been hosting these parties and putting them together? This is my second year now doing it. Uh, I had my first one was actually a birthday party that I planned for myself. And that was kind of the birth of Approach to Link. It was a themed party um, called Approach Approach to Link a Cuff Link. So all the ladies wore brooches and all the men wore cufflinks and the activity of the night was having um, each one approach each other. I gave everyone a puzzle piece and they had to find the match to their puzzle piece. So you must like the dynamics of working with people because I mean in your, in your professional life um, that's what you study with, with kids and students and stuff like that. So what is it about um, people that they're so afraid about going after opportunities and, um, yeah, just really going after what they want in life, whether it's in the dating world, business world, or socially? People are afraid of the outcome, the fear of the unknown. You don't know how that person you're approaching is going to react to your approach, so you don't approach because you're thinking of the worst. And then so when they, especially with your first event and, um, you know, people got to experience this and then that kind of moved you on to like, i got to do more of this. And, and you're realizing and you're seeing that fear. How do you help people get past it? Well, I've since, since that first event, I realized that people would benefit from different strategies to actually approaching and being more approachable. So I started researching it some more. And then I started writing about it and actually trying out some of the strategies that I've um, discovered and posting my experiences on YouTube and sharing it on Twitter. So that's really how it came about from that first event and then into the research. And you've also done something called a conversation party, which I believe it was Hill Harper that did something. Talk a little bit about, about that and, and what you did there, because that I thought was a very interesting um, event that you put together. Yeah, I really liked the idea that Hill Harper suggested, and I took that idea and um, added to it the actual network and an interactive piece to it. So the first one that I did was at um, a party con condo room, and we talked about different dating relationship topics, um, like what Hill Harper's book suggested. But on top of that, we had different interactive activities to get people to know each other and to network and socialize. What was some of the what was some of the good activities that you guys did that you thought were were the best that you found um, with the guest? We did like a bingo type of activity where we had to find um, people that matched. Um, things on your bingo item. So for instance, so like, is there a person in the room that likes to travel? So you'll go around and ask people if they like traveling and then you put their name. And then once you have 
um, a diagonal line or a line going across, you'd be the winner to your bingo chart. Okay. So yeah, sorry, I, I interrupted you about that, but you were going on about um, the conversation and, and kind of the interaction that was happening amongst the, the attendees. Yeah. So they seem to have enjoyed going around and introducing themselves and finding out the different things that they have in common with that game. And there was different opportunities for people to meet afterwards and continue talking some more. And what kind of opportunities are you are you thinking? Like, what what opportunities are people going after, or what kind of opportunities are you encouraging people to go after in life? Well, a lot of the people that come are single, so there's opportunities to find someone that may turn into a relationship. Um, I have an event coming up that is more networking for business. I paired up with the Black Business and Professional Association and we are doing a bowling event. So with that one, it's going to be a conversation style party while we're bowling and we're going to be talking about different um, different conversations related to business and how to network around business and how to navigate in the business world. So we've just posted uh, your poster on that. So that's happening on Saturday, March 29th. So that's coming right up around the corner so they can head to your website to get information and, and really get on the list to get out there, ha go bowling, have fun. And um, But you more specialized, not just in dating, because it, it, right away, like we start talking about this, we start talking about connections, but it's not just about dating, is it? It's, it's really about approachability and being approachable in life to attract careers and opportunity as well. Is that it? That's exactly what it is. A lot of people assume that it's just dating. Go ahead. A lot, that's okay. A lot of people assume that it's just dating, and then they um, only singles end up coming. But I really encourage um, people who are in relationships and people who are are married to join these events and to follow along with approach to dating because it's not just for dating because you could be a you need to be approachable in all aspects of your life. So just like you mentioned at the beginning, you need to be approachable for work, you need to be approachable for job opportunities, even at church, making um, new friends and keeping people at your church is a good way to, to be approachable in that aspect as well. Do you find that people leave your events and they are, like what are some of the the comments and feedback that people are saying once they've left and they've actually, you know, put themselves outside of their comfort zone and they're like, yes, okay, I did this and it wasn't as bad as I thought or what kind of feedback do you get from your events? People really like the different um, activities that we end up doing. So one, one in particular was the painting one that we did over the summer. We went to Paint Lounge. Um, they just opened up a new location in downtown but when we went, we did the location in Markham, and we painted while we had a conversation. And people really enjoyed that because they got an opportunity to paint. A lot of people um, were hesitant in going because they didn't know how to paint. But once going there and realizing that they weren't the only one that didn't know how to paint, they felt a lot more relaxed. So what, what are tips that you can give to people when it comes to whether it's dating or looking for business opportunities? What kind of tips would you give to people to really go after whatever opportunity it is that they want? Um, there's one tip or strategy that I like to share with people for approaching, and that is to give a compliment. That's a nice way to... Um, to start up a conversation with someone, it breaks the ice and it gives that person that you're approaching um, opportunity to feel nice about themselves. And so you they, know what? Give mm -hmm. me a compliment. Tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> I love your Ruby Roo lipstick that you're, you're wearing. <laughs> ah, thank you. I noticed the same thing about you. <laughs> 
and you see, I, I totally agree with you in the whole compliment thing because, like, look at it. All of a sudden, we're smiling, we're happy, and it's not just about approaching uh, the opposite sex. It is about approaching, you know, individual people, and people yeah. generally like to be complimented, and especially when it's genuine, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what you're going after. So great advice it's there. And, and it's interesting because, you know what, I think as women, um, a lot of times if we think about dating, a lot of times uh, women are complimented. They'll say, like, oh, you have a nice outfit, you have pretty hair, you have nice skin, you have pretty eyes. Whatever the case may be, a lot of times men know to compliment women that way. And I don't think that women compliment men enough. And I think that if women, you know, when it comes to dating and relationships, if they actually took a – you know, uh, a step back and actually said, man, I feel, you know, maybe it's also that women feel so used to getting compliments and receiving compliments all the time from men that they don't realize that men rarely maybe receive a compliment. So it is something that makes you feel good. And it might just be, you know, the right thing to do if you as a lady are single or, you know, want to make your partner feel good is to offer up a compliment I think it would just put a smile on a man's face and it would it would do like tremendous things for their self-esteem and I think it could also just make their day so I agree with you 100% on that <laughs> well we appreciate all the information that you've shared with us and um, just the fact that you're having your event so where can we find you on the internet where can people find you they want whether this they're seeing this way beyond um, your event where can they find you you can find me on my website approach to link.com I'm also on Twitter approach to link Facebook Instagram YouTube approach to link and if you're coming to the event on Saturday I would recommend you purchase your ticket today because I will have to hand in all my numbers tomorrow. So if you're interested, go to the website, approachlink.com, go to the events page, and purchase your ticket there. Try something new. This is something um, for you guys, so yeah. <laughs> absolutely, and we'll make sure to post it on our Facebook page as well if anyone is interested in attending the event this weekend. Uh, Fiona, thank you so much for joining us on the Lori and Cher Show today and talking about what you do, and I think um, a lot of people need that need that encouragement on how to go after what it is that they want. Thanks for having me. Yes, and, no problem. And we also have a power quote. We always like to leave with a quote, our guests, just something to inspire you by and something maybe sometimes is just a kick in the butt. And I think today's quote is definitely a kick in the butt. And so if you really want to do something, you will find a way. And if you don't, you will find an excuse. And this one spoke to me. I, I know that um, it's easy to make excuses when something's uncomfortable, but uh, use this one. Use this one. Take that with you, right, Lori? Absolutely. Um, I think of how many times, you know, when you really, really want something, you'll make it work. You will find a way to get it done. And how many times in life, you know, when we don't maybe really want something, we just use excuses. And once you hear an excuse then to me that's my in me for me personally I think then you really just didn't want what it is you were going after absolutely and I just wanted to Lori maybe you can take this one we have a congratulations are in order for um, go ahead no, absolutely. Uh, Tara Muldoon of the FU Project. She's the creator. She was on her show um, a few a few episode weeks five. back earlier. Yeah, episode five. Yes, and um, she has big, big news um, just announced today that um, the FU Project will be receiving funds from the Ontario Trillium Foundation to the tune of three hundred and seventy thousand dollars over five years. Um, Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think it's awesome what she's doing. And um, they have books that are in the, in the works and um, just a bunch of different programs that this money is actually going to be put, you know, is going to be used for. So um, kudos to her, and I think that we're going to continue to see big, big things from her. She's in a ton of papers today. They had a press conference. Um, she was on TV, so um, she just had her feature on MTV for the FU project. So um, happy that we got an opportunity to meet with her, talk with her, because uh, I think she's a woman that people need to make sure they watch out for.
Definitely. We knew her when. She's so awesome. So I'm proud of her. We're both proud of her. And um, congrats to you. And of course, so we found awesome and we are still always looking for awesome. So if you think you should be a guest on the show, let us know by visiting us at laurieandshare.com slash guest and fill out the little form. It's not too long. Let us know what's up and tell us about your awesomeness and maybe we can make something work out. As well, we just want to again remind you to save that date, April 7th. 17th, we want to watch Scandal, the season three finale with us. Details are coming in the next few days. We locked it down and we are ready to go. And this is yet another way to hang out and have fun outside the club environment, but still have an awesome time. Absolutely. Well, well thank you so much to Fianna for joining us, giving us some tips on how to be approachable and how to go after what you want in life. Cher, thanks for joining me today. Um, it was a good one. Yeah, definitely. And, we um, learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. And we will see you guys next week. That's right. Bye, guys. Stay awesome. <laughs>